Although Czechoslovakia, like Poland, was created by the victorious Western powers from the territories of the nations defeated in the First World War, Czechoslovakia did not represent the recreation of a state that had once existed, but the synthesizing of a new state from ethnically and economically disparate elements. The medieval kingdom of Bohemia, the Czech heartland, was reconstituted as a province of Czechoslovakia, but the Slovaks were only with some difficulty persuaded to add Slovakia to it, and smaller territories once part of Poland and Hungary were added to round out Czechoslovakia economically. Nearly half the population of the country lived in Bohemia, which was also the most economically and culturally advanced part of Czechoslovakia. The illiteracy rate in Bohemia was only 2% in 1921, compared to 50% in the province of Ruthenia. This was symptomatic of other large disparities among the peoples and regions of Czechoslovakia, where only about two-thirds of the population was either Czech or Slovak. Ethnic strike was to plague the history of Czechoslovakia between the two world wars and lead ultimately to its breakup into a Czech Republic and an independent Slovakia in the last decade of the 20th century. As a nation emerging after the First World War, Czechoslovakia was more fortunate than Poland or some other parts of East Central Europe, for it had sustained little damage from the war that led to its independence. Moreover, Czechoslovakia was the most economically prosperous of the states to emerge from the dismemberment of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and produced half the steel and pig iron in all of East Central Europe. However, four-fifths of the population was still rural. In the Slovak capital of Bratislava, Slovaks were still only a minority, with most of the other inhabitants being either Germans or Hungarians. Much of the country's industrial development was in the western province of Bohemia, and a substantial proportion of it was in the hands of the Sudeten German minority there, the largest German population outside Germany and Austria. Creation of the Czechoslovakian state did not put an end to the internal ethnic strife between Czechs and Germans, which had become sharper in the preceding century. Rather, the new state became only a new arena for that strife, which led to even greater tragedies for both Czechs and Germans. Like other newly independent peoples, the Czechs, after the First World War, used their newfound power to discriminate against their own minorities. In addition to preferential hiring of Czechs in the civil service, the government was also instrumental in transferring capital from German and German-Jewish banks to Czech banks, and in breaking up German-owned large estates to be made into smaller farms for the benefit of the Czech peasantry. The more fundamental and intractable problem, however, was that the Germans in Bohemia did not want to be part of the new Czech state in the first place, and asserted that the right of self-determination of nations which had created Czechoslovakia should apply to them as well. The interspersed German and Czech areas of the Bohemian borderlands made a separate German territory not feasible. More important, from the standpoint of maintaining militarily defensible borders, Germans were concentrated near the mountainous border areas, and their secession would have eliminated the new country's geographical defenses. Violent German protests against the denial of their claims to self-determination led to the Czech armies opening fire and killing more than 50 Germans. The internal ethnic strife in the new country during the 1920s was later exacerbated by the rise of the Nazis to power in neighboring Germany during the 1930s, leading to a strident Nazi movement among the embittered Germans of Czechoslovakia. All this culminated in the Munich Crisis of 1938, in which Czechoslovakia was dismembered under threat of invasion from Germany. Czechoslovakia's western, predominantly German Sudeten region, was annexed by Hitler. Six months later, Germany took control of all of Czechoslovakia, which remained under their control for the next six years, a traumatic period of many atrocities committed against Czechs and Slovaks, and preferential treatment given to Germans, many of whom responded with loyalty to the Nazi cause. A bitter backlash followed after the Second World War ended. Both unofficial violence and official discrimination were instituted against Germans per se, and only those who could offer proof of their loyalty to the Czechoslovakian cause were allowed to retain their citizenship. Ultimately, more than three million Germans were expelled from Czechoslovakia at the end of the war, leaving behind a German population less than one-tenth of what it had been in 1930. 
The fact that more than 18,000 Germans have demonstrated loyalty to Czechoslovakia also chose to leave on their own, also spoke volumes about the ethnic polarization in the country. Nor were these Germans readily replaced. Half a century later, there were still deserted towns and farmhouses in the Sudetenland from which the Germans had been expelled. The fact that the Soviet army had driven the Nazis out of Czechoslovakia did not mean liberation, but incorporation into the Soviet bloc of Eastern European nations that did not regain independence until the last decade of the twentieth century. For Czechoslovakia, it was more than half a century since it had been a free nation. While the mass expulsions of Germans from Czechoslovakia was one of the largest expulsions of a given ethnic group after World War II, this was not a unique phenomenon of the times, nor were Germans the only transferees. The population transfers in East Central Europe between 1944 and 1948 included 31 million people, transferred voluntarily or involuntarily for a variety of reasons. The widespread and large-scale readjustments of borders between various countries of the region was accompanied by efforts to produce greater ethnic homogeneity within the new borders. To some extent this effort succeeded. Thus Romania, whose population was 72% Romanian in 1930, had an 88% Romanian population by 1977. Poland, whose population was 69% Polish in 1931, had a 97% Polish population in 1991. Czechoslovakia, however, despite its mass expulsions of Germans, had the proportion of Czechs in its population rise only modestly, from 51% to 54%, while the Slovaks rose from 16% to 31%. Hungary achieved a more than 99.5% Hungarian population by 1990, but this represented a relatively small rise in a population that was 92% in 1930. Most of this ethnic homogeneity in Hungary was a result of massive losses of territory to surrounding nations in the peace treaties following the First World War.